So we're in the lakes. We're still in the lakes. And if you didn't see last week's video, I will stick a link up here in the corner. We had a cracking adventure up Luffrig Fell. We were exposed to the elements, 40, 50 mile an hour winds. Um, absolutely amazing little adventure. And um, we even managed to come away with one or two fairly decent little photographs as well. So yeah, definitely go and check that out if you want. So that was last week's video, but that was yesterday for me. And in that video, I mentioned that I wanted to get up this morning for sunrise. However, the forecast was horrendous. It was terrible. It was forecast, the strong winds were sticking around. It was forecast heavy rain and obviously completely clouded over. So I decided to skip it. Now what I will say is that's 99% of the time, that's not the best idea. You know, it's always worth going out with your camera and shooting landscapes, even if the forecast is bad. However, this weekend, I've got two or three days of fairly intense landscape photography, if you want to call it that. So I felt like I could afford to skip the morning, you know, and just spend it planning today's sunset hike, which is exactly what I did. So we are near a town called Keswick and we are in an area around the beautiful Derwent water, which is somewhere that I've never been. Same as last week when we went up Luffrig Fell. So always really exciting to explore a new area, of course. Um, we're gonna head up towards somewhere called Bleaberry Fell and hopefully get a beautiful view over Derwent water and the Derwent Fells as well behind it, facing off to the west. So really looking forward to that. And wanted to show you guys very, very simply um, how I'd go about planning this sort of sunset hike, why I choose a certain location, what sort of photographs I'm hoping to get, that sort of thing. So nothing too complicated, but hopefully it'll help one or two years out. So yeah, always a pleasure to be in this incredible part of the, part of the country, part of the world actually. Um, so come along with me and I hope you enjoy this adventure. Wow, what a stunning location. Welcome to Walla Crag. And yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And this is pretty much my exact location um, for my sunset shot this evening. This is everything that I've planned. And I'd say everything's pretty much as I pre-visualized it, to be honest. Everything except from the weather, that is. Um, it's not too bad. It could be a lot worse. It's actually quite atmospheric, which is something that I like a lot. Um, he's saying that we've got what looks like a little bit of rain coming in from the south there, so uh, hopefully we don't get soaked up here. Um, but yeah, absolute, absolutely beautiful vantage point, beautiful viewpoint. And what I'm going to do is just chill out up here for five or ten minutes, just enjoy the view and probably get my camera out and just sort of fine tune my composition a little bit. But yeah, it's absolutely glorious. What an amazing spot. Now, as promised, I wanted to quickly talk you guys through in a little bit more detail how I go about planning this sort of photography trip. You know, why I choose this certain location, things like that. And this is a pretty easy one. Um, so I'm gonna show you up on the screen here on your left hand side. Um, I do use Ordnance Survey maps generally, but I'm just gonna show you this one here. This is um, an app called Photo Pills which does have its own sort of topography map on there as well, which shows a little bit of the landscape, which is ideal. Um, but what I really like about this is it's showing me exactly where the sun is gonna be setting. So if you see that thicker orange line there, um, that shows you the direction in which the sun's gonna be setting, which to us 
is pretty much directly over there, right towards Cat Bells, which is the sort of biggest peak that you might be able to see in the background there if the, ra if the rain is not blocking the view completely. So I know that the sun's going to be setting over there. And then obviously I know by looking at my OS maps that looking out to the west, I'm going to see all of this beautiful view of Derwent water um, and all of the rest of the Derwent fells there in the background as well. Obviously, you've got to imagine this on a clear day. You know, we can't really see too much at the minute. And then right in the middle of the lake there, then beautiful two islands. We've got St. Herbert's Island right in the middle. And then the smaller one there, I'm not too sure what it's called. It's probably on here. Ramps Home Island. But yeah, they were the two sort of foreground subjects that I had in mind for this image. Um, those two, obviously the lake and then the beautiful fells in the, in the background. That was the sort of idea that I had pre-visualized for a composition. Um, so I'm going to go ahead with it because it was the plan to do it. And it's still, hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be a nice image. Um, I'd like to get a little bit more clarity in the background. Basically, I just wish I could see a little bit more of the Derwent fells. But, you know, what can you do? We can only work with what we've got. <sighs> Beautiful. Um, so I'm going to get myself set up pretty much here now and I'm going to take a couple of shots. I've got my composition in mind that I've been talking about and I'm probably going to take a little selfie shot as well. So the rain didn't quite make it to us, which is obviously wonderful. I don't really know what happened, but I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. Um, which means that over towards Cat Bells and the Derwent Fells, we have got really, really beautiful conditions. I think the light is glorious over there. I'd describe it as being nice and soft, um, and we can see a hell of a lot more than what we could 10 minutes ago, which is obviously wonderful. Now, conditions-wise, this is a stark contrast to last week's video at Lufrig Fell where we had that wind. It is so still, we have not got, there's just not a breath of wind in the air. I'd say probably about 20 minutes ago, there was a little bit of a southerly, southerly breeze coming up the lake, which meant there was a little bit of movement in the water. So I'd initially planned to use an ND filter to try and smooth the lake out, but now it is completely still. It is an absolute mirror, which is fantastic. Now, I'm going to be getting kind of a different sort of shot than I'd pre-visualized pre um, during my planning stages, which is not always a bad thing. It's very, very rare in landscape photography that your plans work out, you know, 100%. Usually something changes, whether it's the conditions or maybe the viewpoint's not quite how you'd envisage it, something like that. But what I will say is it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. I'm working with the conditions that I've got here, and I'm going to be getting a photograph that I'm, I'm really, really happy with at this stage. Um, so yeah, very, very good. Uh, so if you look over there, we've, I'm using them two islands, um, which is going to be at the bottom right and third of my frame. And then the lake is just beautifully still. And then we've got cat bells and one or two of the Derwent fells, like I mentioned there in the background. Um, and sorry, yeah, that is going to be the background um, for the composition, which is amazing. And we've got a beautiful, beautiful reflection of cat bells as well, going down into Derwent water, which is fantastic. And what I really like about this image is the atmosphere back there in the fells is really creating a nice abstract shot. So, you know, there's not a lot of detail. It doesn't need to be an extremely sharp image, but it's just the two islands, cat bells, and a few of the fells looking very sinister in the background there that's sort of fading off into the distance, which is just beautiful. So yeah, very, very abstract. And looking at it on the back of my camera, there's barely any saturation in the image as well there's no color so i'm definitely going to do this as a black and white but i think it's going to work perfectly as a black and white anyway um so i'm shooting iso 100 f9 and one third of a second the settings aren't massively important here um i'm shooting at just under 35 mil on my 18 to 55 millimeter lens zooming in just so i can get the the two islands in shot cat bells and the derwent fells in the background that's all i need um I've started using a six second self timer on my camera because my tripod's rubbish and it's a bit spongy up here. 
But yeah, beautifully soft light there in the background and an image to be proud of, I think. Really happy with that. So yeah, can't wait to get home, get that image up on the uh, on the laptop and start editing it. It looks wonderful on the back of my camera and something a little bit different and something a bit unexpected as well. And I hope this adventure and that image has, has been a good example of how improvisation is a, is a really important part of landscape photography. And honestly, it's very rare that things go to plan, especially, you know, when you're trying to rely on conditions and stuff like that to do you a favor. But it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It shouldn't be looked upon as a negative. It's part of the challenge, it's exciting. And it's, it's one thing that I really enjoy about landscape photography, improvisation. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you are new. Thank you very much to all my loyal subscribers for your support. As always, massively appreciated. Hope you enjoyed the adventure and I shall see you guys next week for the next adventure. Out.